My guy, my guy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. The way 2019 popping off. You better dance like you're out your mind. It's coming in strong. You don't have time to sit down on your praise. Let me tell you, I dance all the time. In the elevator, whether I'm with somebody, let it come on. It's over. The grocery store, it's on. Because I promise you guys, there's something about dancing for God. <laughs> that makes you know that you know that you know, yeah, that he is almighty. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but it does it for me. So that's why every time you see me, I'm bouncing to something. Miss Tina says that I'm always dancing, even when I'm not dancing to the song that she's playing. She swear I have a song in my head and I'm just getting it. She's telling the truth, I am. So this morning, We've clapped our hands, God. We've danced in your presence. Let us pray. God, we thank you this morning. God, thank you for laughter. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you, God, for a coming together that is on purpose. So, God, this morning we dance in your presence. God, this morning we welcome you into this place and to the hearts of your people, God. God, I pray for this word. Thank you for your anointing that will go forth in these instructions. God, I pray that everything that is said today will reach the ears of your people. God, give us instructions like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. First and foremost, I want to thank Pastor and Pastor Jay for letting me stand here. I say it every time I'm standing here, I'm two types of crazy at any given time. So when they decide to give me the mic, God bless them. Because <laughs> ain't no telling. I'm just kidding. I ain't, I ain't that off the hook. But nevertheless, I thank them for allowing me to stand right here um, on behalf of Pastor in his place. Um, if we could continue to pray for him and keep him lifted, he has not felt well this week. So um, I'm thankful and grateful that uh, he decided to stay home so that he can rest. Um, so if we, got, if we could just keep him um, in our prayers. Also, just pray for our ministry as a whole. Um, we, we, as a ministry, need prayer all the time. And I know that we get a little forgetful. We just think that we just run off oil and water, but we don't. Um, it's constant, and so we have to keep going, but at the same time, we have to cover each other. So the title of my message today, well, I'll give you the scripture first. Um, if you would like to stand, it's very short and quick. By the time you stand, you will be sitting back down. <laughs> I am coming from Isaiah 60, verse 3, and it reads, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. You may have a seat. I told you. Y'all don't listen to a word I say, do you? I told you. The title of my message, put in parentheses, for heaven's sakes, and beside that, put, turn your light on. Parentheses, for heaven's sakes, in Tasha's voice, for heaven's sakes, turn your light on. We need you. So here's what I'm excited about today. I'm excited about our conversation. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the deepest of speakers, um, per se, so I do just like to talk. But one of the things that I do know that is when I'm in this place of teaching, I'm in my right place. This is righteousness for me. Um, and the reason why is because I love to teach. Um, I love to make things plain. 
I love to be able um, to be clear. And while I'm teaching you, I'm learning. So this message is for me as well. So let's go back to 2014. Pastor taught us about our high beams. You anybody remember that? Yeah. We had the, we had the um, picture with the high beams from a car that was shining. But what he reminded us of with that is that you should not dim your light for anybody. We high beams forever. Turn up forever. But I think parts of us thought that when we turned our high beams on, that that meant that we would have to go and search out people. So we've been searching, but that's not what the high beams are for. So let's go five years after today. Me and Minister April were talking, and she said, you know, I, these five years, I don't know if I've had my lights on. And I said, you know, that's true. I can't say that I haven't had them on, but I can say that I've dimmed them. Why? I'll tell you why. I have a long list of reasons. I'll only give you a few. Within the last five years, there's been a lot of death. We've buried a lot of people. There's been death physically and death of relationships. There have been death of mindsets. And then there's also been death of finances. We've lost a lot. A lot of it's been on us, but we've still lost a lot. Within these past five years, there's been births, right? We've had a lot of babies around here. Yeah, they, we hear them every Sunday. Now they old enough to go to children's church. Jesus is real. <laughs> but we, we've had a lot of stuff going on for five years. We've had to learn how to trust. We've had to learn how to give. We've had to learn how to take. We've had to learn how to stand on our own two feet. We've had to learn when to kneel, when to pray, when to get up, when to walk, when to talk. You see it. Dimming of lights. And you don't even realize it. It's been so much in the past five years that it makes you want to go and hide. Literally hide to the point to where you're tired of people wanting to know what you can do for them. I'm tired of people asking, can I, will you, how come you did not do something? So I snatch my light back. Like Pastor said, I take my ball and go home. I take my light and I go home, Jennifer, because I can't handle the heat of it all the time. So here's the deal that we're going to do today, and I want everybody to agree with me. Yeah, go ahead. I see it on your face. I'm scanning the room for agreement. Agree with me. We will not chase another person so that they can see our light. We will not campaign, not one more time, in order to show somebody our light. And here's why. When you do that, your light gets dimmer and dimmer because you're so busy chasing that you're stepping away from the source. But here's the other thing we have to agree to this morning, that we are going to stop complaining that we do not have help. Because if you're saying that you do not have help, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you have the light on for business? Is your light on? And if it is not, and you're saying that you don't have help, that's not our fault. That falls on you because we don't see you. Your light's not on. Let's look at Isaiah 60 and 3 and see what it says. I'm going to read it again for you. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And then verse 4 says, and your sons and daughters. It actually says, if you would take the time to look around, you will see that your sons and daughters are coming to you as well. So you've got Gentiles who are those 
who are seeking to uncover darkness. So they have yet to have a relationship with God. Then you have your kings who are here to cover you, who are here to serve you, who protect you, who counsel you. Then you have your sons and daughters, those people who already have a level of trust in you. They have a relationship with God, but they need your leadership. Now, if you look at that scripture really closely, that's three different types of people that are coming at you at all times. You're never off from your light. There's different people coming at you, but what we're going to understand today is that even in the different people that are coming to you, you're covered. You're covered. I need for you to walk away knowing that even when your light is shining its brightest, please believe that you're not uncovered. You're not just standing out by yourself. That's why you have the kings. They have come and wealth in their kingdom. And what they do is they make sure that you have everything that you need in that kingdom. So what does that look like for us? Pastor, for example, he builds leaders. So everything we do in this house goes back towards what? Leadership, right? So therefore, if you're in this house and you're plugged in, there's no way that you should walk away and say, I don't know how to be a leader. You have to ask. And if you don't ask, then we won't know. Does that make sense? But then you have those who are Gentiles. They might not look like everybody you hang around with. And you ask yourself, now why do they bother me all the time? It's because your light is shining. And it's something that you have in you that's drawing them to come towards you. So here's what we need to do. I want to show you how covering works for us, for your light. So that the next time you feel like you're under attack or you feel like something's going on, you don't have to worry about the protection. You don't have to dim your light because your light is what is giving you your steps. And if you dim it, everybody around you is in the dark. So what I chose to do is because I'm, ve I'm a very visual person. Tina, if you'll put the light bulb up for me. I hope you guys can all see that. So as I was studying Isaiah, God began to show me how people will give into your bosoms. Not only that, but he says that the sun will always shine on you. So therefore, if your light is shining, right? And let me go ahead and make it clear. Your light is your place of righteousness. Your light is not you saying, hey, I sell cookies over here. Or hey, I fix shoes over there. No, your light is where you're supposed to be. So if I'm supposed to be teaching, but I'm somewhere trying to stir a pot, and you come over there to get my good, tasty cooking, not so tasty, because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm trying to sell you plates, but I'm angry because nobody supports me, because you're in the wrong place. I'm not drawn to that. You're a good cook, but you're not a chef. You do all right. But what are you supposed to be doing? So when God talks to us about our light, I went and I studied the light bulb. Now, there's a lot of things about this contraption, but we're going to look at three parts of it. First of all, I wanted to know if God says that we are the light and we're protected, how so? So let's look at the light bulb really quickly. The outside, you see the glass of the light bulb, correct? So I wanted to know why would the light bulb need glass on the outside? We have all these new bulbs now that don't have it. But why this particular one has to have the bulb, has to have the glass on the outside to make it a light bulb? And here's why. The glass 
outside of the light bulb protects the light. What it does is it keeps oxygen out so that when you plug the light in, it doesn't burn up. What it also does is that when it twists in, it locks in. So therefore, there's no movement, there's no shakiness in your covering. You see what I mean? There's no shaking. You guys stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. The advantage of the glass is this. It transmits light at high volumes and it has a high melting point. So it can withstand the heat. It can take whatever's coming at you, it can take it. Then it says it covers the protective lighting source. So not only is it covering the light, but it's covering the source that gives the light. You with me? But then it contributes to the radiance of the light. So Milton, not only is it covering you, it's making sure that your light shines as bright as you allow it to. Does that make sense? It doesn't fight you about your brightness. It says whatever brightness you have, I got you. I have you covered. But then it goes on to say that the light bulb can come in any shape. My light doesn't have to look like yours. My light is not your light. So therefore, the light comes in many different shapes depending on what you need. Now inside the light is the little thread, you see it? That is where we get the actual light from. But now once you plug your light in, it goes to about 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit in one second. So it's heated immediately, correct? And because the bulb keeps you from the oxygen on the outside, you can breathe without worrying about blowing up. Is this making sense? I hope so, stay with me. I promise you I'm gonna make a point. So since we already have it in a bulb, which is the glass, we have the light, we know now that there is no overheating outside of the bulb. Now, the bulb helps you to plug into your source. The source that gives you energy. Now, you can twist your bulb in, First Lady, and you won't get shocked and you won't get burned. Nothing's gonna happen, but your light will start to shine. So once the light is shining, here's what happens. You start realizing that maybe something isn't quite right, right? Sometimes you might twist the bulb in a little crooked, gotta take it back out, try it again. Sometimes it's not quite lining up with what you're trying to plug it into, take it out, try it again. But here's the other thing, sometimes your wiring is faulty. Sometimes what you're trying to place your bulb in is not meant for your bulb to go into. So now you have a flickering. You don't have your fullness of your light. Now your light is flickering on and off. It's because you have frayed wires that you're messing with. So now you begin to understand that I have a covering. I'm protected. I'm the light. But where's my source? What source will allow me to be fully me? Because if I plug into anything, now I'm shaking and I'm not quite right. So that means you can't place your bulb in any old socket. You got to watch where you twisting your stuff in. Because your twisting may be off and you may twist and get the wrong results and mess around and get burnt. You don't want that. 
So God says to us, bring y'all minds back. Y'all so awful. That's why I don't bother with (laughs) y'all. But that's why we have to depend on a reliable source. That's why we have to read the manual. Because if not, Mr. John, as much as you work on houses, if you don't know what you're plugging into, you're walking into danger. You're walking maybe into death. You might be walking into a darkness that you can't rightfully relight, if that makes sense. So Isaiah is telling us, look, if you would turn your light on, people will come to you. But when you turn your light on, when you step into your righteousness, where you ought to be, where God's calling you to be, what you're supposed to be doing, not what I'm supposed to be doing, but what you're supposed to be doing, Miss Betty, when you plug in, that's when people see your light. The Bible calls it your sunburst. It shows you that, hey, I'm open for business. And so even when people come to you, and it may be the wrong business, don't worry. You got your bulb. You already have your bulb, right? Tina, put up the other picture so that I can show them what this looks like to me. Minister April found a picture for me as close as my vision could get. There's a hand, if you can see it. It's holding the light bulb, and look inside of the light bulb, it's the light. What does this picture say to me? It's telling me that God reminds us that I'm the owner of the bulb, Tanika. I own the bulb, correct? I send kings to you. You don't have to chase because I'm already holding you, so you don't need to roll out of my hand and try to go chase somebody else. I'm holding you, correct? I have the bulb, which covers, I cover the kings, correct? And guess who covers you? Those who are called to you. That's how that works. And because of that, your little light can shine as much as you can stand it. As much information as you can take, as much instructions as you can handle, as much obedience as you can give out, let your light shine because it's already covered. But here's where we get kind of shaky. We get hot in our light because the hottest part of the bulb is the light. The hottest part of the bulb is the light. And this is why, and God had explained this to me last night. The reason why it's so hot in there and you feel the heat is because when we read this scripture and, they, and it says that they are coming to our rising, we think, ha, ha. yes, Lord, let the people come. That is not the truth. Here's the truth. God had to show me last night, instead of us standing here and letting the sun rise on us like we have become, right? Here's what happens. The reason why you feel the heat so heavy is because your righteousness beams the light, Miss Sheila, down on you. It comes upon you. So your righteousness brings that heat upon you because it is your righteousness that shines the beam. So why would you be hot? Because now in my righteous place, I have to remember that everybody that comes to me doesn't believe in my light. It gets hot. It gets hot. Now in my righteous place, people don't know that I might need some rest for just a little while. I get a little hot. In my righteous place, people don't always treat me right. So it's hot. It gets warm in that place when you know you standing in the right place and people turn and give you their hole to kiss. And you think, but Lord, it's hot in here. I'm standing in the right place. You told me to come here. Why am I so hot? 
Because righteousness calls for you to keep standing, calls for you to keep burning, calls for you to keep having your light on. So when you get tired of putting on your light, righteousness says, whoa, baby, hey, I stay beaming. I stay high beam. What's your problem? So even when I'm laying around and I don't want to do what God says to do, I'm hot. Because I'm supposed to be, Jemiah, somewhere else. Instead of laying around waiting and searching for those people who love my light. I'm looking for them. I take it everywhere I go. And when the first person that says they like my little old light, I flicker it over there and see how far they're going to like it until I say something they don't like. Then they want to turn the switch off. Then my little light ain't worth two cents. But righteousness says when you stand in this place, even when things come to you to hurt you, even when things come to you to question if you're making the right decision, even if your kids and your family feel like, girl, please, you're doing too much, even if somebody comes to you and says, I want to tag along, and then you find out that they really didn't want to tag along with your light. They just wanted to kind of get on your coattails and ride along. Even when righteousness says, where's your source? Turn your light on. Stop tripping because somebody else was tripping. Stop trying to dim your light because somebody told you that you was doing too much, that you too bright. Stop trying to always question what I say to do. You're in your right place. So even when it hurts like hell, stand in your right place. You don't chase. You don't need to chase. I promise you, you don't. So here's what we do. We ask God to turn our little light on. But then we get busy trying to find who likes our light. But the people who need your light, they don't see you. Because you too busy coming down off the hill, city, light. You too busy running down the hill trying to see who down there needs some light. When it's people standing in front of you waving their hands let me tell you something about these good people that's around you i don't care if they look like you or not they might not do what you do they might be red cupping if all i know i'll hang with them real fast god forgive me i got problems too i ain't no stranger to holding no red cup in my hand i'm not some days i just be thinking <laughs> And then I come back to myself, and I just go to sleep till I, it just shake off. That's what I do. But they won't always look like you. Believe that. But when they come to you, light, correct? When they come to you, Trina, light, not always because you act like them or look like them, but they see something in you. And I can't explain why I want to be around you right now. But if you keep your light on long enough, not only will I be attracted to you, but I will become attracted to your God. And you won't even know it yet. That's why we have hands that go up. That's why. Because they watch. But if we think that everybody who comes to us is going to come to us with comfort, we are sadly mistaken. And if every time we get a little bit uncomfortable because we're shining our light, right? And somebody wants to be a part of that light, but we say, oh, no, nah, they too loud. They talk too much. They get on my nerves. Every time they come around, they want something. He always cussing. Ain't your first time here, cuss words, cut that out. Anyway, that was a side note. Y'all weren't supposed to hear that part. But every time, God is saying, let me tell you something. It's good that you serve me. 
I believe that's Isaiah 49. He says, it's good that you serve me, Jeremiah. I'm glad that you serve kings. And I'm glad that you serve the ones that I've saved, Miss Sheila. And Valencia, thank you for serving those who look like you. But guess who I want you to serve? I want you to serve those who have yet to accept me. Jubilee, this is why. Because we're building a kingdom. And we're already in the kingdom. So what are we going to build if we don't add nobody to the kingdom? You can't chase everybody away with your little light. Is that right? So God is saying, I need for you to grow up in this thing. Trust me when I say that I have you, Allison. There's nothing that can get to your light. I wish that I could just, just run around this place and say it over and over. Nothing can come against your light. It's already protected. But when the kings come to you for counsel, and when they come to tell you the truth, you have to be willing to be open to that. Because that's your covering. That's your covering. Even when you feel like you don't want to be covered, and you feel like your light is doing just fine, if you don't listen to those who come to teach you, those who love you enough to correct you, if you don't give ear to the ones that say, hey, I protect you no matter what you look like, then when you plug into that source, there goes your flickering. You know when your light's flickering. You know. You know when you go in your closet and you turn that light bulb on and you hear that quick pop. But what you do, though, what you do? You hear it, but what you do? You turn it off, what you do? You turn back on. <laughs> Even though you know good and well that light just went out. You know it. You still going to try to turn it on because that's what we do. But God is saying, why even go through that? Why don't you embrace your light? Why don't you stay on your heel? Why don't you stop chasing people? so that they can see the goodness in you? Why don't you stop trying to show people your gift when you already know that they've walked away? I said they will come to you. They will come to you. The wealth will come to you. But is your light on? You got to turn the light on first. You can't be walking around in the dark and acting like somebody want to try to chase you in the dark just because you got on cute glasses that light up in the dark. Don't nobody want to see that. We can't chase you like that. Some of us too cute for that, first of all. And second of all, my glasses don't see that well in the dark. I ain't say my eyes, I say my glasses. <laughs> they don't see that well. So here's what we need to do, guys. Stop dimming your light. Stop it. Cut it out. God gave it to you. He called you to that place. He did. And if he called you to it, he'll sustain it. He will. So while your light is burning, you're going to have covering while you're covering. While you're covering those who may not look like you, act like you, smell like you, do what you do, while you're covering them, there's someone covering you and someone covering them. There's never an uncovering unless it's from darkness. Me and Mr. April were talking last night. I tell all our business. April, don't be like that. And we were talking about Motel 6. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. I pause right there because I know how y'all be acting. Y'all try to sit up here and act like y'all just. But as soon as somebody say something, John, they minds just be like. Phew. 
We were talking about Motel 6 because they always leave the light on, bruh. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Ain't nobody hanging around Motel 6. Just clean your heads out. <laughs> but here's what Motel 6 does that we absolutely agree with. They leave their light on. And then they tell you, we're going to leave you light. We're going to leave the light on. For you. Yeah. So you don't have to, you don't go by walking around. You're like, oh, there you go, Motel 6, right behind me. No. When you're looking for it, you're going to find it because they leave the light on for you. And guess what? They don't even care if you don't choose them, Jennifer. <laughs> They still leave the light on, Kiana. They don't turn it off. Because they know you have other choices. You might choose to go here. You might choose to go there. But you best believe when you get here, we ready. We ready. We stay ready. High beams. We stay ready. The light is always on. So, Tammy, even if they don't choose you, it's all right. Even if your feelings get a little hurt, leave your light on. Leave your light on. I set up a, coll a collage of people. If you're not in it, don't, don't take offense. It's just because I set it up because I need for us to see that we have high beamers around us all the time. All the time, guys. So we have no excuse for turning our lights down or dimming them, melting or turning them off. Because let me tell you something. When my light gets a little low, hey, I phone a friend. Because I fear darkness. I don't like being in the dark. Last Sunday, I lost my vision while I was standing up here. I did by my own fault. I want to say that. I couldn't see a lick. And God started to show me, do you like this kind of darkness? You turned your own light out. <laughs> Nobody did anything to me. But I hadn't eaten in two days and I hadn't had anything to drink. No, I don't starve myself, but my bad habits. I have a bad habit of not eating. I can go all day and by 12 o'clock at night, I'm like, oh, something's not feeling right. What would that be? Um, could it be that you've had no food? Yeah, sounds a little weird, don't it? But that's how I operate. And I do it all the time, by the way. But last Sunday, when I turned around to look at that screen, I couldn't see any of this. But because I know CYM, I know the shape, I know that if I just walk forward enough, I can bump into this and I'm here enough the way I could have followed this thing out. And I could have got to that door fairly safely. Y'all would have thought it was weird, but I would have made my way to that door. But I couldn't see. And it scared me. And then my hands started to shake. So now this thing has become very public because I'm sure half of you guys knew something ain't right about Mr. Todd today. She a little off today. I did call to worship and I couldn't see. But then God reminded me there are people around me that's the source. There's Katrice, she's a nurse. Miss Freeman, they all came to see about me because I'm surrounded. My bulb is thick. My light was hot, but my bulb said we can handle this. So don't you worry, Minister Todd, we got you. And they started to get me back to where I was supposed to be. But Jennifer, I had to plug back into the source. I had unplugged. I wasn't following instructions. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And because of that, Mr. D, I was in the dark. 
in the dark. And by the time I got back there and they were trying to help me, God just kept telling me, if you just follow instructions, just listen to wise counsel. They're telling you what to do. Do what they say do. So even when April got back there, Miss Sheila got back there, Miko got back there, he started inclining my ears to them. Do what they say. Sheila told me to start praying, start praying. Catrice told me to eat, I ate. I promise you, it's working for my good. I was aggravated, but it was working for my good. I promise you. Miss Kim told me you better drink every last bit of that juice. We ain't leaving until you do. But guess what? I had to come back out here and do call of salvation. Not because I was forced to, but God told me. I gave you that word. Yeah, you're in the dark, but you're still the light. You're still the light. If you would just plug in and do what I tell you to do, and within minutes or so, I felt better. April had to walk with me last Sunday, but guess what? Even when I turned around and couldn't hardly see the screen, y'all didn't even see her. She was whispering the words in my ear, and I was echoing what she was saying. And this week, God had to show me, that's your source. I'm sending you kings to cover you. So even when your light is a little frayed, I'll build it back up if you would just pay attention to your covering and get back on point. So here's our last thing. Tina, will you put up the collages for me? I picked some pictures because God was telling me to remind you that you have beautiful feet. Many of you have forgotten that you are a light. Many of you have forgotten because of everything else that's going on that God, you called me to this. So on purpose, I need to remind you, Tanika, you have saved lives because you decide to have a grief share even when you're grieving. <laughs> you do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Jemiah, you teach. You don't know how many people you've explained God to that didn't get it. But they do now because you decided to keep your light on. Thank you. Miss Tassie, when we come back there and we eat at Salu's Kitchen, you think you're just feeding us, but you're taking us back to the original of the original of the original kitchen when my grandmama cooked. And you give me the chance to see her again and you don't even realize it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Freeman, on Sundays when you stand over there dancing, let me tell you something. Sometimes I put my shoulder in it. But Mr. Freeman will two-step his way out of there just as fast. And you remind me that God is good. That he is merciful. Thank you. Miss Regina, you're allowing people to use their voices. People that were silent can now speak because of you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bishop, when you're on that radio during the week, I told you to your face. <laughs> I listen to every word you say because you make me come out of my hiding place. Thank you. Thank you. He just began to show me people. Tell them thank you. Thank you, KP, for being such a great coach to these babies. Some of them don't have fathers, but you're everywhere you need to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin, for counseling with me when my daddy died. I was so angry. But you didn't worry about that. You told me what I needed to hear. Thank you. 
thank you. Miss Kim, if it wasn't for you, whew, let me tell you, she feeds our babies on a regular. She comes up in here, she ushers. She gets us straight, and then she go back there and sit down like she ain't said nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angie, for your shirts. I am cute. I believe it. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, for Christina, for singing on the praise team with Kiana, even when y'all might not even feel good in your bodies. Thank you. Because there's been times when my light was flickering and I came in here and heard the band playing and you guys singing? Thank you. I don't take it lightly who I'm surrounded by. I don't. I don't. Tammy, you speak lies into our sisters, our young girls who may not have an ear. Thank you. I appreciate you, Valencia. Octavia, thank you. Thank you. Because my light is protected because of the gifts that you bring to the table. Dr. S., thank you for the meditation. Thank you. Because of you, I walk around almost every day, and I remember, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. I say it all the time. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Keep up. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Thank you. Because if you didn't bring meditation back here to us and go against the tradition of things, I wouldn't talk to God the way I do. So thank you. I appreciate you. So I put that up there so that we can be reminded that we are light. Stop chasing. Stop panhandling your righteousness. Stop letting people pay pennies on the dollars for your righteousness. You standing around, walking around, trying to give it away. Your righteousness is not for you to bargain with, Miss Sheila. It's not. You may get a few cents here and there, but you'll never get the true value because you're chasing. Do what you do. Do what you're called to do. Let them come to you. Let them come to you. Let us stand, please. <laughs> Turn your light on. For heaven's sakes, turn your light on. Please. We need you. We need you. All heads are bowed in this place and eyes are closed. God, we thank you for salvation. Thank you, God, that you said that everyone is welcome to the light. Thank you, God, that we are living our lives so that people will be able to see the salvation of the Lord. If you are here this morning and you do not have a relationship with God, let me tell you something. You're surrounded by kings. They're covering you right now as we speak. And there's no shame. If that's you this morning, and you are ready to turn your light on, let me see your hand quickly. You can stay where you are, but let me see your hand quickly so that we can pray together. I see your hand, young lady. Thank you. Is there anyone else here this morning? This is not about shame. 
You don't have to step to the front. You've already had one come before you. In fact, you've had four come before you this morning. No shame in the building. If that's you and you want to have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, if I could see your hand. Let us pray with the one. Can we go ahead and celebrate first of all? Let us pray this prayer. God, thank you for salvation. I've received my light and I'm going to shine. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead it is with my heart that I believe and it is with my mouth that I confess that Jesus is my Lord and he is my Savior I am saved in Jesus name Amen Guys, I think I did something backwards. I was supposed to put my takeaways up there first. It says it right there. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm backwards. Tina, will you put the takeaways up for me? I'm sorry. Awesome. We have two takeaways this morning. It says, you do not have to chase after people or campaign for your light to be seen when you are in your place of righteousness. Your resources and those who are drawn to your light will come to you, and your righteousness is your high beams. The last one says, we complain that we don't have help. Turn your light on so people know that you're open for business. Say it with me, turn your light on. Tell the person beside you, just in case they don't understand. Turn your light on. Turn your light on. CYM, I love you. Have a great day. Turn your light on, for heaven's sakes. Thank you.